hello in this video I'd like to explain to you uh, what we're doing here what is economics uh, some of the basic differences between micro and macro and give you an understanding of the circular flow model so here we go I'll try to follow along with my slides here and um, and here we go hope smooth as possible anyway so starting off uh, a lot of uh, there's a lot a lot of students ask me what what is economics what are we trying to do I really like this is uh, Alfred Marshall's quote from, well, it's really not a quote, it's how he starts off his book, Principles of Economics from 1890. Uh, he says it's the study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. So I mean, we're going to go on and with that in a second, but really it's what are humans be, what are humans doing here? Now there's other social sciences that try to answer that question. Um, economics is part philosophy, part math, part statistics, and, um, and part calculus we try to build models that, that maybe explain that what's going on or why why things happen the way they do uh, individuals are important social action is important uh, how people interact with the others uh, and how how people are are trying to just make their lives better so that's why it's an exciting uh, uh, course I always found it to be my favorite and not that I don't like the other subjects but this is this is what I spend my time doing so uh, as a formal study, economics gets going in, in 1776. Uh, before that, there were other people thinking about these problems. It just wasn't really formalized, right? So there were probably philosophers like David Hume and some of the philosophers in, in France thinking about this stuff long before. But as a formal book, uh, we usually mark the time as uh, Adam Smith writing, uh, writing his famous book, which is abbreviated as Wealth of Nations. Often you'll hear it's uh, discussed as the dismal science uh, that comes from uh, a period of time when the British economists didn't or didn't really like slavery, uh, and so they wouldn't wouldn't be invited to certain parties at the time, and they were always, you know, bad mouthing slavery or, or saying saying bad things about that. So um, that it earned the nickname there. So it's not because it's, it's and we look at things negatively. It's just that's where that comes from. Uh, David Ricardo, in, in another video, will will look at his ideas. He's another early economist, very important. Uh, in 1890, Alfred Marshall writes Principles of Economics. This is going to mathematize what we're doing. We spend a, the bulk of this course uh, in micro thinking about his ideas. Uh, he's another British economist. A lot of these ideas come out of the Industrial Revolution and trying to make sense of the radical changes that go on, which is it's, it sounds old, but it's, it's cool. It's given us a, a set of tools where we can analyze what's going on. Uh, say with the, the current changes in Silicon Valley or the current changes in the Chinese economy or the global economy in general. So uh, in, in 1936, the general theory uh, by John Maynard Keynes is, is published. Uh, Keynes is, is more concerned about the short run and things that actions the government can take. Uh, and that's sort of thought of as the beginning of, of macro economics. Uh, other exciting things that, uh, that you can uh, look into uh, in your studies. Uh, so there's something called game theory. We'll learn about that in, in micro. I don't know why I crossed that out. That's not good. Um, but anyway, it's studying uh, sort of uh, non-competitive equilibriums. If you want to make lots of money, continue your studies and, and study uh, econometrics. So econometricians take uh, economics and, and put some stats behind it. And that's, uh, that's exciting stuff. A lot of people are interested in this stuff because of their finance courses, and they want to go on and uh, and make lots of money, and that's great too. So, uh, so this is these are this is why where we're going, uh, kind of where we're headed, and in, uh, in this course and other courses, I encourage you to take more. Um, so one way to look at it is is macro is you know the the big big ideas, the big country ideas, big movements, unemployment, inflation, all that stuff. Micro is the study of markets and firms, right? Or companies, right? So economist word for companies. So um, what we're going to do a lot in, uh, in the micro course is uh, study how people make choices. Um, often we use market mechanism to do that. So you'll hear people say, oh yeah, it's a demand and supply, take an economics class. So uh, that's what we'll do there. Um, and really uh, it's a theory about choices, right? What to do with your money, what to do with your time, and what, what, are, what are we doing here and how can that change? Um, we study this stuff to make ourselves better thinkers and um, it's great stuff. Next, uh, macroeconomics. So it's really just the study of the economy as a whole. So, uh, you know, the bigger stuff, like I just said, um, you know, the economy, 
the unemployment rate, inflation, um, money, its value, foreign exchange, all of that. So there you go, markets, systems, governments. And this is kind of funny. So the difference between micro and macro. Micro, macro is what you owe, so that the, where your taxes are going, and micro is what you're paid. So ha 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 ha. Uh, this is another comic. Uh, so this is branches of of economics. Economists like to draw lots of graphs and charts and stuff. So this is where. So in, on the uh, on this axis, it describes very well. This it describes not very well. Uh, this is will never happen. It doesn't happen very often. And then. This over here happens constantly. So in micro world, uh, we have these sort of uh, picturesque models that we build, and they describe they're describing things very well. Um, students sometimes criticize and say it doesn't really happen. And then um, macro, the stuff that macroeconomists study, recessions, things like that, they happen constantly. And we don't have great uh, theories always. Um, tends to be more arguing in the macro world about what's going on. Uh, economists are not a solid block, so. Moving on. Okay, so we'll talk about economists, and you could be one. So if you go uh, go on and get a PhD, you can uh, become an economist. They they generally get paid pretty well. I will um, put a, a Rodney Dangerfield clip into the uh, the videos, so we can think about that. Uh, this is another comic. You know, economists aren't often the the most outgoing or famous people, but they do exist. Um, and so on to Adam Smith. So Adam Smith really recognizes the first economist. And, um, you know, before Smith, governments kind of thought, well, we could just plan everything and we'll just get the most gold. Right? So in Smith's day, uh, the most gold was Spain. And Spain had tons and tons of gold. The Portuguese had tons of gold. But they weren't really leading very good lives. So this is a puzzle to Smith, and he wanted to know what was going on with that. So he wrote uh, The Wealth of Nations. And uh, if you pause the video, you can you can read it here. Okay, so the first part he's talking about uh, is that individuals are gonna, gonna decide what what is most advantageous to them. Okay. Uh, and when he says capital, he's talking about their their labor, but also any 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 tools, equipment, anything that they have access to, and uh, he goes on to say down here, uh, it's directing that industry in such a manner as it, it's what they produce may be of greatest value. They intend not only his own gain. Get that out of the way. Uh, as in many cases led by an invisible hand to promote an end that was no part of his intention. Okay, so he's doing what's best for society, but that's not what uh, what, what they, that person was intending to do. Okay, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop right here and make another one. Been going on a little bit too long. 